Hi everyone, and welcome to our Permanent Collection Spotlight. In this video, we will spotlight a silver gelatin print in our collection by Pinky Bass. Pinky Bass returned to college for an MFA in painting and drawing at age 50. She discovered her true voice in photography, although installation performance and mixed media figure prominently in her current work. Her exploration in photography has always aimed at revealing the edges of the mystery of aging, life, and death. She works primarily with the human figure and nature in black and white compositions. Bass has recently introduced eco-printing to her process of making and is exploring how to combine eco-dyeing with photographic images. Bass has had over 41 person shows and participated in numerous group exhibitions throughout the US, as well as in Mexico, Italy, Germany, Macedonia, and Canada. Her work is included in numerous collections, including the High Museum, the Philadelphia Museum of Art, and the Polaroid Collection. We are excited to present Pinky Bass. Please listen as she speaks about her work in WMA's collection. Friend, uh, Kitty Couch and I have been working together and we did an exhibition together and a lot of the work I did took on the names of various um, mythological women and Rhea happened to be one and Erda was one and Hertha was another. Uh, various images that came from that time bear those names. So, um, so that's where that came from. We did a show at the Light Factory in Charlotte called Erda, The Birth of New Forms. It was the first time we had put together her ceramic work and my uh, photography which was a really interesting experience. We actually projected my images onto some of her large clay pieces and I, I fixed them with liquid emulsion, which was a big deal, but it was, I mean, it was really fun. It was good. So anyway, but Kitty is very much a part of this series and also really a part of my whole photography. So that's a little background on the, that series actually. So, okay. Yeah. So, um, and then back to that, just looking at the piece, I'm going to show everyone the piece now, but, um, so it looks like there's a lot happening in the image. Could you just tell us a little bit about what you intentionally put in the image? And, and I, I, I don't like to ask people, what does it mean? Cause it doesn't have to mean anything, but if there is any meaning there, please share. <laughs> okay. Well, I think for me, the meaning comes when I decide to put a title on it. So it, for me, it fell into the realm of some mythological thing that I had no control over that just appeared in my life, which, you know, that's, but what my, my method of working, number one, using pinhole photography means I never know for sure what I'm going to get. I've got that one thing going. The second thing is using, I was using Polaroid positive negative film. So with positive negative, that are positive <laughs> negative film, it, I, I can do all kinds of tricks. I can play with it. So I get an immediate image that comes out of the camera, but then I can manipulate it and do other things with it. And one of the things early on I began doing, and it's, it is evident in this particular piece, was solarizing the negative. I would open it up before you were supposed to, and so it would solarize the negative, and that way I would always get the same print when I printed from the negative rather than having to do the solarization in the dark room. So though particularly the pinhole and the Polaroid were two of the things that were very important to me in my process and became just amazing. It was the way I worked when I could manage it. It was, it was, I mean, I, I would make, I don't know, I have a, a, a camera called the Bible with two points of view and I would photograph the form, the nude form indoors, because I didn't want to, I'm, you know, I'm, I wasn't really an exhibitionist. But on the other hand, I, I wanted outdoor, I wanted the relation to nature to show. So I would do one, one image would be indoors with the figure, the, ex, the other one would be outdoors with images of nature and they crossed over because of the way the camera was constructed. So this whole idea of playing with, with the figure in nature 
And that was also important to Kitty. That was one of the reasons these images became very strong for us was working on the, from that perspective and on that image, that idea. So. Okay, yeah, and, and that was actually one of my questions, which I think you've kind of touched on throughout the conversation was, where were you as an artist at that point in that series? Because I feel like there's a lot happening. Yeah. Um, so well, one, to me, one of the, uh, that particular image is, has an extra kind of kick to it because it was after Hugo had come into the South Carolina uh, coast and devastated McClellanville, South Carolina, where my former professor and another good friend, a lot of people, friends, actually lived on that coast. So after that event, Kitty and I got together and actually went to McClellanville and spent several weeks photographing the human form in nature and particularly the detritus that comes after a hurricane. So the what in the image, what appears to be I don't know, like roots or something coming out of my head, basically probably our roots, but they were, they were, it was an image that I was able, because of the Polaroid, able to double expose on with my, with my face. And so therefore it became this, it's, it's kind of like collaging photography on a, on a strange mm -hmm. kind of level. I don't, you know, I never, I don't particularly have a, a name for it. It was just the way I worked. And, and so Hugo was, I mean, the place was devastated. I mean, there were trees down and roots and, you know, it was, I mean, so it was a very fertile time for us to be able to, to actually work and photograph. And um, I've got a whole series of Kitty called Earth Body Forms in which her form is just stuck in with all these branches and things, which are really, really interesting. Most of them during that time were images of her rather than myself, but this one, just I, you know I never know and this one came out so it was like yay <laughs> whenever you use yourself as that the body and the human form is it is it purely because you just need a body or is there like a connection to yourself mostly it's because I need a body okay um, that's interesting sometimes, I that. and, and and it's become more incre increasingly more so that I am so interested in how my body is aging and disintegrating and coming toward the end. And so I'm very interested in how the form has changed and how it looks. My friend Carolyn Demerit has, and I have been friends, she was also is also from Charlotte, and she's been photographing me over the last 30 years just as a friend. And we've got a, we've just started a Kickstarter project for our book called Entwined. And so it includes images that she's been making of me over these 30 years and um, seeing how my body trans, trans, it doesn't feel like me when I look at the images, they're just, they're forms. And, you know, to me, the beauty of, of some of the stuff that I think people would be quote embarrassed to show to me are beautiful because they're interesting and they show the, the progress of things. But um, anyway, and, and at some point she, was generous enough to let me stitch on her photographs. So it's a the book is a combination of her photographs of me and me stitching on on images of the human body, mostly internal organs and and things that show there. So, yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, thank you so much for uh, taking some time to chat with us about your piece in the collection, and um, I hope that you have a great day. Thank you so much, and.